you know guys, I've got a spark which I'm going to use to give you good night fire for a brand new video in this ranking miniature series here on the channel. Now today we are going to be ranking all 20 of the superchargers from the worst to the best and that does of course involve turbocharged Donkey Kong and Hammer Slam Battle so that you can see within the ensemble that I have put before you so at the moment I'm just you know, creating a voiceover as we get to see the entirety of the superchargers cast. So, let's just say all 20 of them look glorious all in unison. There is no change here. One thing these videos have consistently are glorious shots of all of the cast that have in this shot right here. It's no different. But now that we're back to my face, so let me just make the quick disclaimer that I love a lot of these characters, I think the cast is significantly overrated and I cannot wait to write them all from worst to first, so without further ado, let's roll the intro and do exactly just that. Coming in at number 20 for me is going to have to be Super Ship Self Off. At first I liked this character and found it to be an improvement, but after, you know, grinding out the character, I no longer feel that way because Super Shot Stealth Off, first of all, is really janky for the fact that she locks onto enemies, but not all too well. When you lock onto a single one, it's great to circle around them and defeat them with ease, but when it comes to crowds, you know, it's no longer so easy to deal with multiple enemies out in front of you because you can't just attack one enemy and then move to another one very easily due to the natural lock ons. Of course, going into stealth mode is great as always, and you can combine that quite well to create a nice flow with both the fact that you leave behind your gun as it's firing off, and you can reappear with your tertiary attack. In fact, your tertiary attack dealing knockback damage is great, period. But the main problem ultimately with this character is her lack of ability to deal with crowds. She's great at singling out enemies, but that's about it, really. And overall, she's just not nearly as fun nor as fast paced as the original self of giving her number 20 on the list. But as for number 19, we have Nightfall. Unfortunately, this moveset is not the greatest in my personal opinion. The moves don't really flow together all that well. She's not particularly fast-paced and not particularly strong either. Her attacks just deal moderate damage, which I was kind of hoping for more, considering she's one of the only Dark Skarners. And speaking of Dark Skarners, amongst the Dark cast, she easily has one of the greatest designs because, man, does she look cool. The fact that her hair it's incredibly long and you know proceeds to attach itself to the base is really clever design and it really adds a lot of memorability and personality to the figurines if you're as far to say and the fact that she also covers her face as well just makes her look sinister and it, it just gives an eerie type atmosphere whenever you're playing as her I suppose so she's definitely got an on-screen presence, needless to say. It's just unfortunately for Moose that it really lets her down with its lack of flow and pacing, you can go as far to say, given her 19 on the list. But as for number 18, we have Hurricane Jetpack. Regardless on whether you swap out his gusts of air for uh, saw blades, a jetpack is still a fucking jetpack. And here, you know, his moves certainly have a better flow to them. The fact that you can use his suck and blast to bring back in saw blades and then launch the Mac off again. Or you have his flip kick thing with Bob that knocks back enemies, but unfortunately this ability is very similar to Super Shot Stealth Self's tertiary ability, so the two just kind of get amalgamated together for me, and it makes neither of them really all that memorable. Besides knockback, you know, not the most important thing with Jetback because you're not really getting up close and personal with enemies in the first place because he's a ranged character, he's meant to keep that range. So overall, it's just not very well thought through move said. It is an improvement over the original Jetback and the fact that the Soul Blaze deal better damage and having a knockback kick is much better than wasting for tertiary attack on nothing but flight but that doesn't still excuse the fact that hurricane jetpack is pretty lame i do like the design though for armor and party is very well detailed and fun to look at but moving on to number 17 we have yet another downgrade version of the original character big bubble pop is a character who got extremely nerfed in his beast form which is a shame because that's what made him so good in the first place I don't mind having, you know, a slightly stronger pop fist if it means having a timer, because at the end of the day, in your beast mode, it has to be urgency. 
and the fact that the original pop is so OP in his beast mode and with such destructive powerful capabilities it what makes it so fun to harness all that chaos for your own damage output so not really having that amount of power to it makes pop fizz a little more boring i would even go as far to say there's no risk of it either because there is no timer it's just an alternative mode and that's never what the beast mode was special for and then on top of that his trumpet you know it has some fun sound effects but for moves just aren't as memorable as the potions you know they don't have that much of a lumen effect they don't really combine to overpower enemies they're just more forgettable if anything at all giving big ball pop there's nothing other than the, uh, number 17 on the list mind you moving on to number 16 we have dive pops usually for greatest gameplay so far he can keep his distance quite well and you know the fact that his sonar can make all of his bombs uh, be destructed you know, it's very cool new set that, and uh, I really like his water geyser type attack, whatever you want to fucking call it. And with dive pops, when it comes down to it, the chaining of his moves and the fact that you can so easily chain his sonar into the bombs that he leaves behind when you launch off his rockets. It's got a nice flow to it, it's powerful, but unfortunately the design is rather blocky, I mean it's a massive circle with a gun and some arms for Pete's sake, sure the armour is detailed and I love that about him, but the design is just dull and it's not that memorable because it's not distinctive neither, especially in comparison to characters like Eyeball who have a similar type execution to their design, so ultimately this character is a lot more boring than others and whilst his attacks are powerful and flow together quite well, they're not fast paced due to the slow walking speed of dive pops and they're just not all that interesting either. But moving on to number 15 we have a rather hot take right here because I have put Thrillipede. It just goes to show how great all of the other superchargers coming up if Thrillipede, as good as he is, gets number 15. Now Thrillipede is unique in the fact that he has multiple limbs even more so than four. He has four arms, two legs, and the only other characters to have more than four limbs are characters like Slamban and Washbuckler. So seeing this done again is really cool and it's still distinctive enough considering how wide the Castle Scarns is and at this point in time he was only the third one to do it and the first character for life at that. So what's really cool about Philippide is that you can press the primary attack buttons and he will hit his grenades no matter what uh, position the enemy is in context to him. He'll lob behind, he'll lob to the side, he'll lob in front. That is really effective in and of itself, and it's really well animated too, watching his arm just lob grenades everywhere. But then he has punches. Yeah, it's kind of lame. Not only do they deal very little damage and are incredibly close range, but they're just not that powerful either. His cocoon, however, makes up for all that, makes his moveset more flowing and more effective. So whilst the secondary attack is a bit of a waste and I never find myself using it, at least he does have a tertiary attack to juxtapose that and still make his gameplay feel fresh as you're still you know, choosing a, enough different combat strategies in order to make every single time you play this character feel fresh and unique in comparison to the last time you played as him, in other words. But it's ultimately the design and the figuring of this character that is much more better and far exceeds his movement capabilities, in my personal opinion, so that evens things out to give Philippi the perfect and the spot in my personal opinion. Coming in at number 14 is going to be none of them splat, an incredible design mind you with a sheer amount of attention to detail and the purples and blues and reds and all that really sharply contrast each other to make her figurine look pristine and it truly stands out on the shelf without a shadow of a doubt. And her gameplay is also great, she has a mix of range and melee so there's definitely a fresh balance here and it's fun to tackle each combat scenario differently mind you. But her attacks, you know, she loves paintballs, she spins around her paintbrush, you know, they're not the most imaginative uh, moves, shall we say, and it's such a shame that a creative design had just such lackluster moves to go alongside it. Not to mention her figurine is incredibly fragile and it can be frustrating have to handle, having to handle it with care or risk breaking it, mind you. But I do really like how the paintbrush, you know, the paint just kind of spirals around the character is the word I was looking for. It's just a really, really cool figurine despite its fragileness and ultimately being let down this character is just how generic her moves feel and the fact that they aren't nearly as powerful as other characters' moves coming up. 
So we're going to move on to number 13 without further ado, which is going to be Fiesta. Now, just like Splat, this character's design is great. Phenomenal even, because boy, do I love Fiesta. But what's universally agreed upon with this character is that whilst having a great design, Fiesta is one of the most lackluster characters game-wise, because his attack deals such little damage and it makes him so inefficient in combat. It's frustrating because he dies so easily due to just not defeating enemies quickly enough before they get around to defeating him. He can summon amigos, which is really cute and very expressive actually. It really adds to his Spanish type design, which is very cleverly thought through, and that's what makes his design so great. It's not only for sharp contrast and colours, but for the attention to detail when it comes to his cultural representation. So there is no denying how awesome Fiesta is design wise, but you know, I can't emphasize this enough. The gameplay just doesn't live up to that, given Fiesta number 13 on the list. But as number 12, we have Shock Shoot Terrafin, a massive improvement on the original for me. I do find for figuring itself rather blocky. He has rock armor and a massive fuck off shark shooter bazooka. But outside of that, he is still just a shark. You know, it's not the most fun design to work around with, in my personal opinion, though it is quite an expressive design. And uh, Terrafin looks really intimidating with the expression on his face, and he just looks so ready to shoot up some sharks towards his enemies. And his combat is really fun this time around. Rather than punches, you can keep your distance with your cannon, which is much faster paced. And then not to mention, when you go to bury underground, there's a lot more flow to the moveset as well. It makes him just overall a lot more powerful and a lot more fun to use. And the animations on top of that are just threading everything together. They look cool and they're destructive too, so it's fun to harness that destruction for yourself. And naturally, Shark Street Terrafin is just a huge amount of fun for it. However, moving on to number 11, we have Stormblade, one very, very fast paced character because she can just absolutely blaze through enemies, firing off her blades at massive rates of speed, mind you. And then on top of that, she has great crowd control when she can launch off blades in all directions. It just makes Stormblade such a fast paced and powerful character too, like seriously, enemies are defeated in what feels like mere seconds because you're just there mashing away, and mashing it in of itself is fun as always, Stormblade is basically for trigger happy if a supercharge is cast, but with the addition of speed and even less M lag than what trigger happy has, and then she also combines herself with Flashwing as well, and the fact that she has great crowd control and can launch, uh, and can launch blades all around her even, so I suppose when you make uh, comparatively not as good as other characters then that can make her less memorable and distinctive I suppose and she is just another bird type design with blades along her feathers you know that in of itself is similar to Free Ranger so Stormblade does feel like an amalgamation of other better characters and because of that as I was saying earlier she can lose distinctive ability and become quite forgettable but I will never forget how much fun I have absolutely creeping enemies with a moveset that's as effective as this. I just wish the design was a lot more original and that the moveset felt a little more unique than what it was in comparison to characters like Trick Happy and Flashwing. But we're going to move on to number 10 without further ado, which is going to be Smash Hit. One of the most unique designs of any Skarna. We have, you know, this character with a massive wrecking ball. He looks awesome, you know, the attention to detail is most certainly there, and the character is definitely into me, and I wouldn't want to go against a massive wrecking ball like that. But then you get into the gameplay, which has a, you know, ounce of strategy to it, you go as far to say. You have to choose whether you want to detach the wrecking ball and go whip it around with a chain, or keep the wrecking ball attached and just circle around enemies, because you can use great maneuverability with a wrecking ball to your advantage since you can so easily circle around enemies while still swinging around your wrecking ball or you know whilst it's detached and you magnetize it back you can create just this massive shock wave of damage all of his moves flow together very very well and his moveset is just so unique to him he plays so 
distinguishably. You can't find another Skarner with a moveset to match this because it's just so unique and it makes it so fresh every single time you play as this character and discover new strategies and new combos to work around with. Smash Hit is a ton of fun. He is very destructive, very efficient in combat, so you want to play as him. So you have the motivation there, you have the great design. What else could you want from a supercharger, I suppose, besides some more speed because he is rather slow and that can bring his pace into an absolute drag. But outside of that, he is a phenomenal character and worthy of kicking off our top 10 here. But moving on to number 9, we have Deep Dive Gilgren. Now this guy's moves flow together very, very well. He's very powerful and very effective. He has range, melee as well, so he's a better bad than what the original Gilgren was. And he's one of the few superchargers that actually heavily improves upon the original. In fact, all of the um, supercharged forms from here on out are improvements to the original, in my personal opinion, with the exception of one, but we'll talk about that once we get to her. Uh-oh, spoilers! So, going back to Deep Dive Gilbert, his design for the armor is so detailed, I would have loved to have seen a dark variant for this guy, just because seeing a contrast between black and silver for the detailed armor would have been so cool, and it would have been great to have seen our first ever Gilbert in-game variant, but unfortunately that was too much to ask for, but it doesn't take away from how phenomenally detailed the design is, how much I love messing around with the moveset, and how fresh it is to tackle every single combat scenario, since you're going to do it differently than the last due to just the unique chain of moves this character has and that makes Deep Dive Gilgrunt near flawless in my eyes. But moving on to number 8 we have an incredibly fast based character, Lava Lance Eruptor. This guy has some phenomenal combos that are really fun to watch for before you get a fine extension of a personality that Lava Lance Eruptor possesses. There's a lot more attention in detail, he's no longer just like a volcano with arms and legs, he now has a lance and a bike and helmet. It's just it's, it's really great how they managed to tailor motorcycling to Eruptor's design, very very clever stuff and I really appreciate that. And I appreciate above it all how fast paced this moveset is, it's a complete opposite of regular Eruptor but all of the great stuff still carries over, you still have his massive eruption but on top of that you have a lance that charges forward with great speed and also has great uh, melee damage too with some fine looking animations that look crisp and clean for texture and is phenomenal on the character as well it makes it so there's a great translation between the figurine and the in-game counterpart and above all I just have a lot of fun with this character whilst you're dashing you can even leave behind little fiery volcanoes of your own whatever you want to call them and it just adds an extra layer of depth to his gameplay to give you extra things to do whilst you're doing things on top of that. So Lava Lance Ruptor is great and worthy of number 8. But moving on to number 7 we have Astro Blast. This character is fucking worthless straight out of the box. But once you get to upgrade him that's where he truly becomes exceptional. Because all of his moves chain together somehow. You have his back kick that can knock back enemies. You have of course his space rock which when you fire off a laser at it creates this massive disco ball type effect his lasers in general are just really good and they can be charged up to you know deal multiple hits at once and increase damage who does that remind you of punk shock that's right astro blast you know his moves do have similarities to them when compared to other starters so just like stormblade that can make him come across as a little bit dull and uninspired when it comes to the moveset department and that can take away memorability from his moveset. I barely remember this moveset going into this video, I must be honest with all of you, but that doesn't take away from how effective and fun the moveset is to take advantage of. And on top of that, I love Astro Blast's design, he truly is this space person I guess. And it's such a fun design, he, he has like a crystalline backpack, a futuristic type gun, Protection is also awesome because his face has the spikes and that's fun to rub your thumb along so it makes for a great toy and a great design so Astro Blast definitely has some great highlights to him giving him a worthy number 7 on the list but as number 6 we have Double Dare Trick Happy the character that does not lose sight of what made the original Trick Happy so great since you still have the button mash and madness but on top of that you have cannons you can launch out of, you have sparks that you can create all around you. It just makes Double Dare Trick Happy look like a bit of a showbiz type character and it adds a lot to his wild side personality because you can imagine him as a bit of a show off really. So it's really really cool to see Double Dare Trick Happy decked out in fancy clothes, uh, clothes even. It reminds me almost of a Vegas style type character, he's definitely a daredevil. 
and it's just so expressive. It was the perfect way to expand upon this character's design, and his moveset just flows together a whole lot more now for sparks into the uh, guns that you mash away, or the cannons into just about anything. You know, there's little end lag, and the character's very, very effective uh, because of it, very fun. And again, I love the personality and design here, but unfortunately it is still one of the more simplistic designs, shall we say, and because the design is more simplistic in comparison to other superchargers, it does make Double Dead Trick Happy come across as a little less exciting, quote-unquote, I did use air quotations right now. But even with all that being said, Double Dead Trick Happy is great and worthy of number 6, but moving on to number 5, we have Turbocharged Donkey Kong, easily one of the most overpowered superchargers, Nintendo just really wanted you to feel motivated to pick up this character and play as any superchargers because man his combos are very well animated and really flow into one another very very well he can initiate a donkey kong mode and bring down like little stage elements of the original donkey kong arcade game like when they was developing this moveset they really cared about paying an attention to detail with donkey kong's history like this entire moveset is an expression of his personality which is so cool to see and i just love how well these moves chain together how powerful the character is on top of that he's fast paced too and he heals as he goes along so he doesn't die he's pretty much invincible because he's defeating enemies quickly he's healing up whilst he's doing it enemies aren't getting close diddy kong is in this game which i love he's in this game through donkey kong because I love Diddy Kong, he's one of my favourite Nintendo characters, and my main in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, so ultimately you cannot go wrong with this character. Love it. And not to mention the yellows and the reds of his uh, design work, mind you. Very sharp contrast, and it really makes him stand out on the shelf. But number four is going to be High Volt, a character with even more personality, mind you. And he has, like, battle damage to show that he is just... A force to be reckoned with, I suppose. He can take a lot of damage due to just all of the scratches and dings he has, I suppose. And that's because he is a police unit, I believe, that gives him just a nice background, I suppose. And the background context is what allows his character to have such personality, mind you. I love the design here. The shield and the spear all look awesome, and it translates into gameplay that's fast paced, flowing. And incredibly fun to harness the sheer destruction of. You can pull enemies in by, you know, leaving your staff behind, and then as enemies walk along into your trip wires, you can pull them back in, and then the staff is back in your hand immediately to go straight into combos once more. Or you can use your shield and knock back enemies all around you. No matter what the situation, this guy has a tool to deal with it, and it makes him incredibly fun in combat and really rewards players that get to know and love his moveset. Now I move into my top three and kicking it off is going to be Spitfire. The footage you see before you is actually going to be from my solo run of the character that I did just a few hours before recording this. I might as well take advantage of the three hours of footage I have for that. And I chose to speedrun the game with this character because he's so fast paced and he's so fun. You take out all of the sea and sky vehicle sections and play with just his character and hot streak and you have yourself one blast of a game because it's so fast paced this character is so well animated too you truly feel the raw sense of speed and power when playing as this character just because he's phasing around due to his sheer speed and on top of that you know when you're pulling off combos he's front flipping and all of that fun stuff you know it feels very acrobatic and dynamic and then he has his tornadoes too which deal constant damage to another enemy and then whilst that's focusing in on them you can dash towards another one and form your melee combos so either way you're constantly dealing with enemies there's no end lag so you're always attacking them there is no dull moment when playing a spitfire the design on top of that is also phenomenal there's a great attention to detail and the pose it's just so dynamic and fun to rub your finger along thanks to the excellent texture in mind you so ultimately you can't really go wrong with spitfire despite how simplistic he is but sometimes simplistic can be better especially when it comes to fast paced execution and that's what makes spitfire just such a blast to utilize but for number two we have bone bash for overall despite how high up she is in this list she's still not as great as her original which was ironically enough also number two in her respective list the original Bone Bash Royal Brawl is just too broken, but Bone Bash Royal Brawl gets pretty damn close to replicating just how good she is. 
her moves flow together very very well and whenever you don't have her blades because she's launched them off you have other attacks to deal with so once again there's never a dull moment you're always attacking enemies and there's just such a layer to her combat that's unique to her she doesn't feel like a replication of the original world world whatsoever the only move that pretty much carries over is her skating which can be used once again for great knockback and just comboing into other moves she can corkscrew forward not to mention she can kiss enemies and get healing up from that which makes her very effective in tough situations against boss fights where you wouldn't heal up otherwise potentially you know she has great jumping attacks that are animated very well and not to mention i love the bone armor it's a great attention to detail and it doesn't feel nearly as blocky or dull as sharpshooter paraffin for example so ben Rushable just has a great design with sharp contrast and colors to make her really stand out and a gameplay style that's very unique layered fast paced and above all incredibly broken she, she is so effective in combat because she's defeat enemies incredibly quickly before they even have a chance to get near her you could even go as far as say but that leaves my number one being hammer slam bowser without a shadow of a doubt i love the character of bowser and translating him into a skander it worked so well not to mention you get the nintendo pass with this character he summons coopers and then you can hit him with his hammer and they'll go ricocheting everywhere for red coopers hone in on enemies like they do in Mario Kart for Pete's sake, you can initiate a Gigamount, a Bowser type mode even, and just create the ultimate carnage which is so, so fun to harness. So above all, his moves flow together very, very well, it makes him both a great Skarner as well as a great Nintendo character, and on top of all that, I not only love the design, but I also love the attention to detail, you have armour as well as a massive hammer, I mean this is Hammer Slam Bowser we're talking about here, and his shell is so well textured and so well detailed that I just love with my hat long. It reminds me of a knife from the fact that he has kind of like a turtle shell shield towards the back of him and anything that reminds me of Igniter is a warm welcoming feeling. I love Hammerstone Bowser's moves, how well they chain together. I love the fact that this is one of my favourite Nintendo characters that's been translated so perfectly into Skarnas and is an amalgamation of that Nintendo cast as well as what makes Skarners so fun to utilise. So all things considered, Hammerstone Bowser is a phenomenal character and very much worthy of being my number one. The only disappointing thing about him is that he only works on Nintendo systems. That is what I'm here to criticise. Hammerstone Bowser is just that perfect of a Skarner that the only thing that's flawed about him is that you can't play as him on systems outside of Nintendo. And I really wish you could because people who don't have Nintendo systems to serve right to play as such a phenomenal character. Now with that all being said and done, this video is coming to an end, but before that happens I first want to thank all my Blazing Knights of Scott and Dragons whose support allow me to continue pumping out quality videos like this one. Without them, this all wouldn't be possible, therefore I genuinely appreciate every last one of you from the bottom of my heart. If you enjoyed this video, I have others you can watch by clicking on screen now, and you can even subscribe by pressing the button on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next one, but until that moment arises, PEACE!